Hi guys, this is Tinrel. Welcome to KSP Science Exploration Adventure, Episode 9. Here I've got my satellite craft with my telescope on it. And the purpose of this isn't to show you that I want to scan for more planets because I don't actually want to do that right now. It's that you can see down here at the bottom right, my distance is more than 10,000 million meters away from my target, which I've set as Gale. And you can see I've got no control of my probe. Let's take a look at this from the map view. This is kind of to give you an idea of the distance between my space telescope and my home world. So I have to be closer than that in order to control my probe anymore. The uh, next destination beyond Gale and Seti would be Niven. So if I was trying to land a probe on it on the other side of the sun or even just off in any of these degrees over here, I mean, I'd be too far away to reach it. So I need to get the infrastructure going for uh, some satellites. I'm going to position in uh, Gale's orbit to uh, expand my reach to the whole interior and probably out to maybe about this blue area, I think, with the satellites I'm going to get going. So let's get started on that. Before I launch the satellite, I've got more than 2 million funds, and there are some things that I can upgrade, such as the tracking station. You can see that my max DSN power is 50G. That's controlling how how strong my signal is here. So by increasing that, I can uh, make it five times as strong. So I'll be able to reach a lot farther with my uh, probes with their antennas. So I'll do that. I'm limited right now in my research and development to 100 science. I'm getting pretty close to uh, breaching that. So I'll upgrade that to 500. And I really want this so Kerbals can collect surface samples so that when I go to SETI and IOTA, my Kerbals can pick up some dirt and bring it home. Administration, strategies, might as well bump that up to two so I can get some more. And then let's take a look at the research and development and spend some science. So for this, I've decided I'm going to go with the Advanced Metalworks for the primary reason of its secondary known. So it unlocks heavy duty landing. So I can get some real landing legs, as well as some stabilizers, which I've never seen before. So I'm interested to see how those work. I like to use those. Fairings, uh, my crafts are going to be getting bigger, so I'm going to want 2.5 meter fairings. More science. Experiments, impact hammer, particle collectors, all of that. The seismic accelerometer for when I actually land. I do want that. And then, of course, since I'm going to be sending my satellites out, I want antennas. My current max relay antenna. A direct antenna goes directly to Gale. A relay antenna is something that can be an in-between, so you can have a direct antenna connect to a relay antenna, which then connects to Gale. You can't have a uh, craft with a direct antenna connecting to a relay antenna connecting to a direct antenna back to Gale. The direct antenna is essentially a stop, so you need to have relays in serial. So right now the biggest relay I have is, I think, this is a direct, it's this one. So at the level 3 DSN it'd be 22.4 thousand million G, as they use GM, 22.4 thousand million meters. If I upgrade this, which I'm going to, the next antenna is 61.2 thousand million meters, so that's quite more. Uh, the problem with the relays is they're large and they're not they're not stack based, and it makes them very obnoxious to put on your crafts. Let's see, renewable resources, solar power. I want to be able to put these small solar panels on my crafts because uh, this one that I rely on right now that rotates around dual, it's it's heavy and it's pretty expensive. So for these types of satellites that I'm just throwing away, I'd like an alternative. So I'm gonna actually go for the advanced photovoltaic for the same reason so I can get some of these disposable solar panels that only rotate around one way. And then I can't unlock this yet because I need to finish upgrading this building. I'd like to get that pretty soon though. I'll pursue the advanced SRB, so I'll rocket boosters. Uh, a couple more levels and these will actually be pretty good. The thrust on this is 300, 440, 
2800 holy crap 3800 what so uh 95 more will get me quite a bit more punch from those rocket boosters but i'm gonna time warp through this let's look at construction time for my tech upgrades quite a few this is going to take 17 days for the tracking station i can do some upgrades i've got 13 available i'll go to my research and development increase this from 32 science a day to 256 science a day and i'll increase my shipbuilding time up to 1.65 i'll do a secondary even though i've never used it to 0.8 and now i'll work through all this so this is the quad relay mark one you can see i've got four different satellites with these larger relay antennas it's very obnoxious to get multiple versions of these on the craft in a way that uh fits within a fairing but i don't want to send them up individually I've got 4.4k meters a second delta V. That's basically 3.4k around to get to orbit. I'm gonna go to a polar orbit, detach two of these satellites and set them up in uh, extreme polar orbits. And then I'm gonna use the other thousand to escape from Gale and position two other satellites uh, 120 degrees offset from Gale to make a kind of a triangle in Gale's orbit to capture the interior towards the sun and push out the exterior so I can get to like Tulumo and uh, areas like that. Yeah, this is pretty top heavy, but this craft flies all right, the fuel's right, and uh, these wings keep it in line. So let's launch this. Well, I've got to build it first. 12 days. So like I said, I'm going to put this into a polar orbit, and you can see that the uh, size on the top is significantly larger than the, on the bottom. It's not really balanced out for those dimensions. But I've got the lift, and I'm good to go. I'm going to send this northward. Boom! Giant fireball from the uh, Wildcat. I'm not using a Vesta for this upper stage. So I do have uh, more than one thrust to weight now, so that's not too big of a worry. Okay, so that's off by a little. You can see I've got about 750 meters a second left on this to carry me to outside of Gale, that's not enough. But I'm leaving two of the satellites here in orbit. Let's take a look at how polar this is. That looks like an almost perfect polar orbit. Still have that marker there. So that's good, it's just that uh, it's not circular. One's uh, off by a little. I can't leave these here as they are now because they'll die. So I'll extend these solar panels. And I'll come back to these a little later. No, I should have seen that coming. I'm not too worried about it though. I had them more spread out, but this uh, central one needed twice the delta V as all of the others, and I didn't want to offset my rocket too much by having just one heavily weighted with fuel tanks, since three, three of them were pretty much the same. So I just patched them around and put this in the middle. This is off balance. These reaction wheels will help a lot. I also have to manually keep it going. Let me switch back. Okay, this one. So now you can see I'm up to uh, 977 meters a second. I need about 800 from here to escape Gale. So I'm gonna leave these other two satellites in polar orbit. I'll straighten them out later. What I'm gonna do is send one from the top 
all the way to the bottom to the edge of Gale's Sphere of Influence, and then the other from the bottom all the way to the top of Gale's Sphere of Influence, so that I'll be able to intercept these satellites above or below, and they'll be going really fast as they get near and shoot back out for a long period of time. So let's bet they'll have more hang time away from Gale, and they'll be able to pick up signals around moons or other planets, high or low, and send the signal back down to Gale. So as you can see, I'm kind of fighting this a little. I'm really pushing the yaw. So what I want to do is have Gale up here be part of a triangle where I have one of my satellites 120 degrees offset, so one over here and then one over here so that it'll reach out, you know, one, two, and then three in the top. So I can see, I can get all the interior and far into the exterior. And the way you accomplish that, let me jettison this guy and hope that he just bounces slightly away, not too big of a deal. But for this guy, I'm gonna be sending him out. I need to pull up Kerbal Engineer for this. Show Engineer. So the way this works is this is a single point. It's essentially these two satellites and it's also essentially Gale over there are in relatively the same position. Uh, you can see that my orbital period is 421 days. 426 is actually a year, so I'm offset because I'm not over where Gale is. I'm the entire radius away from Gale to its sphere of influence offset. But what I can do is I can extend my orbit so that it's one third more than what it is now and then one third less. So four thirds and two thirds. And let me just do that with this. So this is the guy that I'm going to send out. Push that away. So uh, four thirds of a year would be 562 days. So I want to push out my orbit to about one year, 142 days for my orbital period. And then I'm actually going to change my apoapsis down here to match the orbit of Gale because I'm offset by a little. So let me just turn on this engine. And then push this guy out that far. So 100, one year, 142 days. So you can see my orbit is pushed further out. That means that by the time Gale goes around in a year, it will take less time than this. So by the time this goes around a year, I'll be back where I started, but Gale will be 120 degrees. So it will be over here um, by the time I get back. And I'm gonna do something different for the other one. I'm gonna bring it inside so it'll go faster. So I'll get there, I'll arrive here when Gale is about over here, 120 degrees offset. Except for that one is a lot more fuel. Let me see if I can get back to one of these crafts. Now I want to bring this one down to about 284 days. Since I have 41 meters a second of delta V left on this, I might as well just spend it. Oh, and also before this dies, extend these solar panels. Solar panel over somewhere. Okay, so retrograde, pull this down. Swap to this one. Activate my engine. And then bring this down. So after these make one complete orbit, when they get back to the place that they started, I need to zero that out so they don't continue in their elliptical orbit. They'll be circular and they'll continue to move in their same relative position 
in Gale's orbit. So they'll always have my triangle and they'll just continue to rotate together. So I'm going to rename this one to One twenty Gale and add an alarm at its periapsis. Five minutes. Sometimes I've had that happen with the uh, the small engine. It doesn't show the plume anymore. It's pretty recent that that's been happening. You can see my uh. Cruise act my vessel's burning though. This is gonna look pretty messy if I keep this map view on with the uh network. So I wanna take that all the way to the edge, so I'm gonna go all the way till I leave and then just slowly bring it back. Okay, that looks fine. Now, I don't want to go from this lower part up until this reaches the apoapsis of this. So I don't ever have, so I always have one on the far side and one on the inside. So they'll yo-yo back and forth. But I'm going to add an alarm for the apoapsis. One minute should be fine. No, no flames from this one either. I wonder what's going on. Anyway, the reason I'm doing this right now instead of landing uh, with Kerbals is because you can see this is going to take one year, 121 days for me to fix that and 121 days to fix that. So I can be uh, sending Kerbals to the moons while those are getting in position. Okay, so my Gale satellites, my interior Gale satellites are in position. My exterior ones are off on their way. Alright guys, let's send some Kerbals to space. Um, I can't get the Strategia contract to land on IOTA because I already flew by it, but let's do some gross over-exaggeration. We'll say 3.5k delta V to get to orbit, 400k, 400 regular, not k, delta V to do a plane shift, about 1,000 to get to IOTA. Let's give us 3,000 delta V in a sandbox and 2,000 to return home. It's about 9,900 delta V. This is 9,804. You can see I've got three curb cans here. I've decided that. I'm going to level up an engineer, a scientist, and a pilot all at the same time whenever I go anywhere, so I'll take all three. And uh, I can explain the rest of this craft as it becomes meaningful later on in this launch, so I'll get this built. 17 days. SIS on throttle up, 3, 2, 1, go. So this is a pretty standard asparagus. This tank's feeding fuel into this tank. It's feeding fuel into the central column. You'll notice that the outer tanks are slightly taller, so I can keep or get more thrust by keeping this engine longer, really. Bye bye. Oh, I forgot the clamshell fairings again. That is so less satisfying. So if the lower part of this with the parachutes and the landing cans is meant to return back into the atmosphere, that's what this 143 delta V is for. I'll EVA my kerbals. I don't know why that was red. But I've got some seats on this lander. I also have some food in the hazard tank. Yep, yep, 
Let's have him go around. No, don't bust those. The sun is in my eyes, I can't see. Solar panels are so fragile. Slow, slow down. Oh, it's just barely too short. Their helmets are clipping apart. Get him on the back side. Now I know a Kerbal is taller than that. Up. You can only reorient. Oh man. I think to make him look up, I've got to use both mouse buttons to. That's a little better. Okay, now I'm ready to detach the actual lander component. Make sure I'm throttled down. Wait, where's my throttle up? And why is my altitude changing? What's going on? So these guys are good to go. Um, gear to extend my pair uh, panels. Whoa, look at all the satellite stuff. Let's change that to first hop. IOTA is target. Let's see, IOTA is there, moving this way. Supplies for six days. I think it's about five days to Iota, about five days back, and 15 days hunger. So I only really need about five days. So that should be pretty close. Gonna point this down that way and jettison it. Get off. But don't hit my solar panels. Get out of here. I have some new experiments. Seismic sensor pods. Those are kind of fun. Science micros. Multispectral imaging. I could actually probably get some science from that like right now. Speaking of science right now, where's this? Log imaging data. That's this one. For science, broad spectrum. If anyone knows anything about the uh, highlighted tank and wants to leave a comment about it, I'd like to not have that happen every time I launch a vessel. RCS off. Toggling looks work like it's working. Okay, let's go land on Iota. And I don't think I need to worry about being on the dark side of the moon because I'll be able to pick up something from my satellite on the back end. So this will redirect me back if I'm on the dark side of the moon. Which is great. Materials bay. Now I don't want to transmit this because I can keep it. 
So 25 science. I'll keep it. I can do one more of those and keep it. Broad spectrum analysis of high over iota. I can transmit that for 8 science. So I think Bob should be able to reset this once I get one more, because there's two science that I can store there. That doesn't look bad for the low resolution from this distance. It looks really nice. Go away, experiment tracker. Imaging data, 12 science. Transmit that. I'll go back to stability assist instead of facing my retrograde so I can cancel my vertical, my horizontal speed and land here. I'm gonna just be landing on my tanks. It should be wide enough. It's pretty stable. All right, guys, there's still a good amount of time left in this mission, so I think I'm going to end the episode here. I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.